in this video, we follow up the earlier discussion about how valuation works as creating or understanding the financial rewards associated with building an enterprise, and talk about some of the methods that are commonly used by experts, by investors, by entrepreneurs, by anyone who is interested in turning or understanding how a ongoing enterprise, a business, a startup, or whatever, a restaurant, how one can think about what it's worth financially. <clears throat> so we'll talk about the primary method, uh, which is uh, the major sort of like the stalwart of what is done in finance, which is discounted cash flow. Uh, we'll talk about that actually in the next video. Um, but essentially what that is, is, is looking at what that business looks like over time as it generates profit or free cash flow, which is profit after investing in maintaining the business, uh, is taken into consideration. And that goes out over time, so when you think about it, you have a stream of cash flows going forward well into the future, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, and those have value because you know they're coming in the future, so you want to understand what they're worth in the present, and that's the notion of discounting those in some way. So you say, if I take that money now or pay now, what is it worth to me to have that those cash flows in the future? That's one of the ways... And the most, the primary way that one thinks about financial assets, including startup businesses. Um, there are other things that are taken into account. One can look at comparable businesses. What that means is that you look at the, a, a businesses in a similar industry. For example, if it's a restaurant, you can look at restaurant businesses that are public enterprises. And you can look at how much profit they make. You can look at how much revenue they make in their revenue growth. You can look at their gross profit, you can look at their gross revenue, or their, um, their operating profit, or EBIT, you can look at their free cash flow, you can look at their assets, there's various different uh, metrics that you can look at for a whole bunch of businesses that are comparable to your business, and then you say, if my business looks like those business, what are those worth? Say they're worth um, two times revenue, and the revenue of a, of a large restaurant is a public company is a hundred million dollars and their company's enterprise value, all of its stock added together, is two hundred million dollars. So that's two times its revenue. You can say, if I have a million dollars in revenue, then perhaps my business might be worth about two million dollars, which is two times my revenue. Or if my profit is a hundred if my profit is a hundred thousand dollars in comparable restaurants like my company that are very similar have have a profit of a hundred million dollars and revenue and their valuation is is a billion dollars they have a hundred million dollars of EBIT and their valuation is a billion dollars then that's ten times your operating profit so I would say if my company makes a hundred thousand uh, dollars ten times that is ten times my operating income might be worth, means my company might be worth a million dollars. So you can look at all of those metrics and from that come up with what you think your business might actually be worth. The third thing you can do is look at your balance sheet and you can see what your assets are worth. This is called sort of a liquidation model where you say, forget about the fact that you have a business that's operating. You have a business that owns five trucks, some real estate, a bunch of equipment, um, and maybe some intellectual property that's worth something that you can sell. And you add up the assets on your balance sheet. You subtract out your liabilities and owner's equity. And you get a book value. And you look at companies that are similar to yours. And they might be worth one times book value or 8.8, .8, you know, 80% of their book value. And that might be what they are worth. So in that particular case... You say, I'm looking at, uh, I have a restaurant, restaurant businesses like Applebee's or Starbucks or McDonald's are typically worth something like 0.7 times their book value. Your book value is a million dollars, so that means that perhaps your company is worth 0.7 times your book value or $700,000. Um, and again, you're triangulating among companies that are similar to yours, but nothing is exactly like yours. So that
therefore there's a lot of uncertainty associated with that. So typically you'll do all of these valuation methods and from that get a sense as to where the range in which a particular business really is or really where it really sits. The final method of valuation which is used and which we won't talk about anymore in the rest of this discussion, but I want to make sure we bring up, is an idea of contingency methods or other kinds of methods like what are called real options that also have value for an enterprise but which um, are more complicated and difficult and we really won't go into how they work but I want you to be aware of this particular situation. An example of this is the valuation of a company uh, like when Google bought the Motorola cell phone business the cell phone business has a couple different aspects to its value. One, of course, is that it actually had customers that were buying Motorola manufactured cell phones or smartphones, their Razor and the like. I happen to have one. Um, but they also had in that context a whole bunch of patents. Motorola was one of the leaders in developing cell phone technology, so radio frequency patents, how that all works, encryption patents. Um, uh, look and feel patents, in other words, how you do, do, do design, design patents and the like. They had all of those various kinds of intellectual property. And you can, you can actually value those with some rather sophisticated methods saying that having ownership of an option, having ownership of a patent, that is, you have the exclusive rights to use this patent, um, has option value, meaning the very fact that you have it and others don't means that there may be opportunities in the future for you to realize great value from that, even though you're not completely sure what it is. So there's some modeling that's done in terms of making, uh, saying there are situations where you might have great value from this. Your downside risk is how much you pay for it, which is the option price. And so your strike price might be quite higher, meaning strike price, meaning how much you might get for it if you're able to develop brand new technologies or brand new products out of this that other people can't because you, you're protected from it. And therefore, there's some additional incremental value for that. As I said, these are more sophisticated valuation approaches, something that to, to understand and to get, uh, to get better at if you become a professional investor like a venture capitalist or a private equity investor, or even anyone that really invests in um, in technology businesses that have a lot of intellectual property or brand value, those kinds of things all are could have value that is in in addition to the value of your balance sheet, and in many cases may far exceed the value of a balance sheet. And so, those are other ways to take into account what a value of a business might be. So that's, this, that's the method, sort of like your, your toolkit for understanding the value of an enterprise. Um, sophisticated investors that are putting a lot of money at risk tend to look at all of these and look at them in all different ways and forms, and then basically from that get a consensus as to the range of value and based upon like the presentation of the team and all of that, decide where in that range this business might actually fit in order to settle on a value and evaluation. Um, in the next video, we'll go into this primary one and start talking more specifically about this kind of cash flow and how that works. And we'll talk about how you do that and what some of the technical pieces are, what you use and what you don't use in the next video. And then from then on, we'll talk about how you actually practically do valuations if you're trying to figure out if you're making an investment in a business or someone is investing in your business what the expectation should be about how much of your business you give to them based upon them giving you a certain amount of dollar value. So that will, our next, our next um, video will go into this discounted cash flow method in more detail. So we will see you, look forward to seeing you then.